Good morning, and welcome to our talk, Recovering Words, Reclaiming Knowledge, and Building Community, the Teacher Conversatorios. My name is May Plum. I'm one of five co-authors on this talk, but this work is, um, is really from a larger team of collaborators that includes many activists and educators and scholars and students. It includes many Zapotec people as well as non-Native people like myself. What we're presenting today is one facet of a much larger project called TICHA. And a major goal of the TICHA project is to increase access to colonial era texts written in Zapotec languages. This project includes things like a digital text explorer at teacher.haverford.edu. It includes pedagogical resources like Kaseid Nain Satin, which you'll hear a bit about later on. And it includes a general um, philosophy of creating educational opportunities. And that's where the Conversatorio program comes in. The goal of the Conversatorios is to create space specifically for Zapotec people to discuss colonial era texts written in Zapotec languages. And the way we've realized this goal in 2020 and 2021 is through a series of online meetings via Zoom that bring together Zapotec people from different communities. This has been a very meaningful project. We've had a lot of success. And we see it as a very productive model for communities that want to engage with historical corpora in their languages in order to reclaim their history. So in this talk, we're gonna be discussing some of the key activities, some of the work that's happened in these conversatorios, which includes recovering Zapotec words, reclaiming Zapotec history, building Zapotec community, and practicing Zapotec pedagogy by creating and improving pedagogical resources. So now I'll pass you off to Aaron Broadwell, who will start us off with some background on Zapotec and the Colonial Zapotec Corpus, and Brooke Lillehaugen to talk about the teacher project. So the Zapotec languages are spoken in southern Mexico in the state of Oaxaca, which you see outlined on the map here. Zapotec is one of the largest languages of Oaxaca. As you can see on the map, it's spoken in central and eastern Oaxaca. One important thing to know is that Zapotec is actually a family of languages with perhaps 50 different varieties. Altogether, there are 400,000 to 450,000 speakers of all these different Zapotec varieties. All across the state, communities are shifting to Spanish in more and more context, and so all Zapotec varieties are endangered. Despite the fact that there are so many speakers in Oaxaca, Zapotec has no official uh, de facto status in the state. And although historically speakers of Zapotec wrote their language, that chain of literacy was broken. So in the current day, most speakers don't write their language, although that's changing. Discrimination against speakers of Zapotec and other indigenous languages has a long history and continues today. Here we see some text of the long tradition of Zapotec literacy. This is hieroglyphic writing, uh, alphabetic writing, began with the arrival of the Spanish Empire in Mexico. And the earliest document we have written in Zapotec in alphabetic form is from 1565. The texts that were written during the colonial period include metalinguistic documents like uh, dictionaries and grammars, many religious texts, as well as various legal texts. And these documents are often stored in archives where the conditions can be extremely variable. Sometimes valuable colonial documents are just in piles uh, tied together. Even when they're well preserved, they're often in locations that are difficult for speakers to access. And also the conditions of the archives often discourage indigenous people from visiting these archives. Our team is very concerned with considering how we can make this corpus of texts more accessible to people who would like to use it, especially the Zapotec community members. The anchor of this project is the Ticha webpage. Ticha is a digital text explorer for colonial Zapotec. On the website, you can interact with multiple levels of many of these texts, including high resolution images, metadata, and when available transcriptions, and even morphological analysis. We make the text publicly available on Ticha as soon as we have permission to do so, even if all we have permission to do at that stage is to publish the images. Because the acknowledgement of the existence of these texts is important to the community and makes visible a written history that is often denied. 
Of course, accessibility is more than making a digital surrogate of a text available. In our case, we think this must include training and community engagement. And to that end, we sought and received funding from the ACLS to create an open access educational resource on Colonial Valley Zapotec, which is developed together with Zapotec partners as authors and co-editors and in collaboration with the broader Zapotec community. This goal of collaboration and community engagement is what led to the Conversatorios. And at the beginning, we pictured these as in-person workshops, some in California, some in Oaxaca, with various communities. But obviously, in 2020, that was not possible. So we transitioned instead to an online model um, where we had Zoom discussions bringing together people in, both in the US and in Mexico. Um, we started this program in the summer of 2020, and we have another round of conversatorios going on right now. This is work that is ongoing. We have two parallel conversatorios that happen at a time. One is led by Socio Flores Marcial, and the other is led by Felipe Lopez. Um, and let me give you a general sense of how this works. So first, the teacher team writes a lesson plan, and we write these plans with a very general audience um, intended so that they could be used outside the conversatorios as well. But we're always thinking about a Zapotec audience as we write. Then in the first meeting, um, Sochil and Felipe lead discussion on this lesson plan. And we envision this as very much a sort of mentor apprentice model um, with the understanding that all of the participants in the conversatorios have their own experiences with their own Zapotec language, their own culture. And so everyone is bringing um, their experience to the table and knowledge sharing is happening in all directions. After this initial discussion, the participants then go and share this new information within their communities in whatever way makes sense for them while staying safe during the pandemic. So in their, with their friends and their family. Then the next week, they come back and meet again um, and compare notes, discuss new discoveries, new questions that they've discovered, um, and kind of wrap up the topic. And then Felipe and Sochil bring um, feedback back to the teacher team on how the lesson plan went and what we learned. So each topic then takes two weeks about. And so in the summer conversatorios, we did a six week program going through three different lesson plans in this way. And this discussion-based highly collaborative model has enabled a lot of very important work and important conversations to happen in the conversatorios. And that's what Felipe and Socio will tell you about next. Sakuji. Lazata, Jots, Jos, and other was Nayot, the Nonagi, Dinuandi, Shachizashtijan. I was one of the facilitators at the Conversatorio, and one of the results was inspiration to reflect on the experience in a blog post entirely in Zapotec that you guys can see here. Also, uh, the Conversatorio uh, helped me to do uh, this type of uh, language reclamation and uh, my experience facilitating and participating in the conversatorio were both motivated and further fueled my language activism. One area of enormous impact for me was using the colonial Zapotec language materi materials to recover, find and confirm some words like 60 or 80. As a child, I used to listen these words from my grandmother, but as an adult, I wasn't really sure uh, if if they were real, but uh, looking at the colonial documents, I was able to confirm them. As you guys can see here now, we have this up that word for 60, which is Gayon and Ta for 80. Creating a community among other Zapotec language activists is very personal, meaningful, as this work is sometimes very lonely, and we had a chance to create a pan Zapotec this network through this experience, not just in Oaxaca, but across the border, especially in California. And the conversation continues on Twitter, so you might want to join us. Uh, you can uh, use Usa Tu Voz and Zapoteco Colonial hashtag. The forced transformation of our original in-person project that resulted from the 2020 pandemic created an opportunity that proved to be incredibly valuable in our intentional resistance to traditional academic models specifically models in academia that are designed with a top-down approach where academics are highlighted and not necessarily 
the contributions of speakers or the community. The virtual conversatorios through Zoom for the summer of 2020 facilitated community building by expanding participation of several native speakers representing 16 different Zapotec communities from the valleys to the Sierras of Oaxaca. It was quite incredible to have this opportunity to connect Oaxaca, California, people like me who are currently uh, in California, but are of Zapotec heritage and people in Oaxaca and of course, other people that connected uh, from other parts of the United States. Through this collaborative approach, we highlighted the Zapotec speakers and community members and credited them and their work and contributions. We actively visibilized and highlighted the intellectual power of the Zapotec indigenous community. We intentionally invited speakers from different spheres of existence, whether that is in the community, uh, students, students in Oaxaca, or in uh, California, academics such as myself or Felipe Lopez, Zapotecs in diaspora, and language activists as collaborators. The opportunity to discuss Zapotec society, its history, language, and culture was enhanced through the participation of so many different voices in the Zapotec community. We were able to converse about our shared concerns and questions, which ultimately served as a form of inspiration and empowerment. We hope that these seeds that we have planted will inspire new generations to preserve and protect the languages, respect the speakers of those languages, and to continue speaking this language wherever they may be. Thank you. One final outcome of the conversatorios is that we have gathered together these lesson plans as well as some other pedagogical resources on colonial Zapotec in an online volume called Kasetnin Satin Learning Together, which is published by our press books. We currently have six units covering topics in linguistics, history, and language activism, and these lesson plans are you know, edited to reflect the feedback we received from the conversatorio participants. And incidentally, we're very pleased that this spring, the LASA section on archives, libraries, and digital scholarship has chosen Kasedne and San for their inaugural section award. For me, knowing that these materials are available to anyone with an internet connection, and that we had Spanish speaking audiences in mind while producing these materials inspires me greatly. I know, for example, that people in Oaxaca have already started using the materials that we are producing in Spanish. I do hope that moving forward, these materials will help inspire others working with endangered languages in academia or in the community at large. So the resulting online open access resource is available now in English and Spanish, and it's developed with high school and undergraduate audiences in mind. And we hope that some of you listening might be inspired to use some of the chapters in some of your courses. And if you do, please give us feedback so we can continue to refine them. Now to finish our presentation, we're going to share some clips from conversatorio participants about the impact of this work and how they're um, proceeding with their community language activism so that you can hear their experiences in this project. I am Janet Chavez Santiago. My town is the Tiplan del Valle, a Zapotec community located in the Central Valley of Oaxaca State. As a child, I never saw any book written in Zapotec. I grew up with the idea that it was a language that it cannot be written. Little I knew about the documents in Zapotec that were written during the colonial period. With the time, I learned that false idea and started to learn and see testaments, prayers, and other documents in Sapt. And most important, I have been able to work on them. The conversatorio has been a bridge to connect me with Sapt speakers from other towns and academics, where we have discussed and learned more about the structure of the colonial Zapotec. And in a way, to understand the sense of certain things in our Zapotec nowadays. For example, the counting system, how numbers are built or how we count things depending their shapes. Like when we count one tortilla, 
we say charrette. Cha refers to the, to the flat shape. We do not say tuy, tortilla, or tuy get, which tuy is when in Zapotec. Through the conversatorio, I have achieved more knowledge and more sources of information that I can share and can use to teach how Zapotec was studied and applied in the colonial period and contribute to eradicate the misinformation towards our language. First, with my family, and as soon as, this, as it is safe, I would love to, ha to hold a local conversatorio in my own community. This lesson inspired me to continue learning and practicing Zapotec in new ways, such as posting my daily life in Zapotec on social media or teaching children who are part of the Zapotec community. And in this way, they could have an impact on the language. And social media can have an impact on other people who follow me and ask questions about the language. In another way, it also helps people who are part of this community in realizing that Zapotec is a language and not a dialect. I finally understood that when I was taking a Chicano class with Professor Sochi as his son. And in the end, it made perfect sense as I got the opportunity to be part of the conservatorio. With this experience, I can share my knowledge with other people I live with and community I'm from. Nala Edith Matias, la Chana Villa de Azordas, Nernia Dichsa. Inin Sha Sharlav Mnitlo, Stevich, Nesak, Ikaners Tichna, Lo, Entreirani, Nikawe, and Dichke, Tega Keste, Puschisa, Gaki Lab. Kidushi para la Tuna Laya, Janet Molina, Kiche, Samlaza Tempa Lula. Conocer más y difundir sobre mi experiencia y sobre mi lengua, mi idioma y dar a conocer lo que yo sé. Finally, this is a poem I wrote in English originally, but after being part of the conversatorios, I decided to translate it in Spanish and Zapotec with the help of my mom. I hope to be able to continue writing these kind of poems to share with everyone through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Now that I'm aware that there is a community of different small towns online, I'm also looking forward to continuing learning more about what each things mean to the town. Hopefully, I can start a YouTube channel where I upload videos of different topics to share with the online world of my beautiful town, language, and popular dishes, and much more that it has to offer. <laughs>